Hey, Al Scott here. If you've got a band, a business, a cause, or campaign, and you need stickers to help promote, check out thebumpersticker.com at thebumpersticker.com. They digitally print with solvent ink, so you get the photo quality results of digital with the strength and durability of old-style screen printing. I'm sure glad I sold the bumpersticker.com to Rick back when. He's made a hell of a great company out of it, and there are thousands of satisfied customers who agree with me, too. Let the bumpersticker.com help you get the word out. That's the bumpersticker.com at the bumpersticker.com. All right, y'all, Scott Horton Show. Check out the archives at scotthorton.org and at libertarianinstitute.org slash Scott Horton Show. You can follow me on Twitter at Scott Horton Show. All right, again, introducing our friend Nasser Arabi. He is a reporter out of Sana, Yemen, uh, formerly wrote for the New York Times, and he is the uh, owner and operator of Yemen Now. It's Yemen Alan. Uh, means Yemen Now, and it's just Yemen-Now.com. And uh, he's been uh, been very generous with his time for the last, I don't know, year and a half or so, uh, talking about, uh, explaining to us about America's war in, uh, well, wars, plural, uh, being waged in Yemen right now. Welcome back to the show, Nasser. How are you, sir? Uh, thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate you joining us again here on the show today. Um, so I didn't have anything really, uh, specific as far as the news to catch up on other than, uh, just that it's the two year anniversary. And I wanted to give you a chance to explain what the various American wars mean, uh, to the people of Yemen, uh, so that an American audience can hear you. Uh, so, I mean, I guess just in order of importance, you want to start with the humanitarian situation of how the average Yemeni is living now two years into this the the second war here that America started, the big one. Thank you very much, um, Scott, for your interest in Yemen. Um, and for the situation here in Yemen, after two years now, it's the, it's more than two years now. We are now at the beginning of the third year, actually. The, the humanitarian situation now uh, of the humanitarian crisis now is described by the UN uh, deputy uh, Stephen O'Brien as the worst human crisis in the world uh, since the UN was established. Uh, that is more than 70 years. The worst humanitarian situation in the world now. This is what the UN deputy, uh, the uh, UN deputy chief said uh, in the UN Security Council uh, meeting last week, and um, this is <coughs> very close to the reality because uh, Saudi Arabia unfortunately depended from the very beginning. Uh, on uh, blockade from air and from land and uh, from sea uh, with the aim of strangling the Yemenis and uh, with the aim of kneeling them down and making them surrender. But unfortunately, uh, what happened is opposite now. There is a humanitarian uh, situation, but Saudi Arabia, unfortunately, did not achieve what it wanted. Yemenis are still fighting. Yemenis are, are still uh, defying. And this was very clear in what they did yesterday. Yesterday, uh, the Yemenis uh, celebrated the second anniversary of this U.S.-backed Saudi aggression with the aim of uh, delivering many messages to the world. Uh, the first message was to the U.S. and U.K. leaders. And uh, this message was Please stop this war 
on Yemen, stop the war and left the blockade. Uh, starvation and uh, famine in Yemen will be a dangerous thing to everyone, not only to Yemen, to the region and to the world. This this was the, the, the one of the most important uh, messages that uh, was observed yesterday in the in the in the in the million in the, in the rallies which was participated by millions from all over Yemen. The second message was, you would not. Also, the, the second message was, you would not. You, that is U.S. and U.K. leaders, and Saudi Arabia. Because, unfortunately, Saudi Arabia is seen as a tool in the hand of U.S. and U.K. leaders. Unfortunately, so you uh, you would not make the peace of brief would would be the only thing that would work with Yemen with Yemenis, not any other thing, not starvation, not bombings, not killing, uh, not anything else, and the the evidence is in the street. Millions of people after two years, despite all difficulties, despite all hardships, be, uh, more than 1 million and, uh, and 200,000 people uh, are without salaries for six, uh, for six months now, for seven months now, seven months without salaries. And uh, the blockade as I told you, uh, made everything difficult in this country. But all this did not prevent people from making the biggest rally uh, maybe in the, in the region. And uh, I hope you could see some pictures, whether videos, images, or, uh, or photos. Um, uh, it was very, very, very big rally. And uh, as I told you, with many messages. The second message in this rally was also to uh, to thank uh, to the Yemeni army, to the Yemeni army and the Yemeni fighters. Uh, it was a message of thank, a message of thank for what they did, for what for uh, the role they played to protect Yemen uh, by fighting the invaders. Used back Saudi invaders, and also by um, uh, by um, uh, uh, developing and by making new weapons, despite the blockade, new missiles. They uh, uh, modified many uh, ballistic missiles uh, from the ballistic missiles they had from the uh, Soviet Union time, and they. Uh, modified it. Uh, uh, now the, 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 the Yemeni army has uh, uh, short and uh, medium and uh, long range ballistic missiles. The last one was Burkan 2 that hit Saudi Arabia only two weeks ago uh, in, in, in Riyadh, in the Salman military base inside Riyadh. This is the last, uh, the latest uh, ballistic missile that was fired from Yemen. So the millions of Yemenis who uh, rallied yesterday here uh, wanted also to say thank you to the army, thank you to the fighters, thank you to the missile uh, defense uh, people who made all these uh, things. The third message from these rallies was to Yemenis to say uh, this rally was from all over Yemen, from south and north and east and north and east and west, and also with one fly, with one voice against the Saudi U.S. backed Saudi the U.S. backed Saudi aggression. So. Uh, 
the first message was to the American, to the supporters of the US, uh, of the Saudi aggression, and the second message was to the army. The third message was to the Yemeni people that uh, uh, Yemen will re- remain united uh, despite all difficulties and despite all the attempts of Saudi Arabia to divide Yemen uh, and to uh, make uh, to help Qaeda to rule uh, like uh, now the, some areas in the in the in the south. So um, this is the the, the situation. Uh, and um, for the military and security, no security, um, he, uh, no security incidents here in the, in the in the in the north. But there are many security problems in the in the areas under the control of the Saudi-backed forces. Unfortunately, not only Qaeda, uh, Qaeda is ruling, but I mean security like security things like. Um, killing people, like uh, blundering, like um, uh, many other things, like uh, highway robberies and uh, many other problems. Um, And for the uh, military uh, situation, it is still the Yemeni uh, fighters are uh, uh, going deeper and deeper in the the Saudi lands, in Asir, Najran, and Jaizan. Uh, achieving many progress, and uh, this was uh, this is always documented by by uh, war media, and uh, Saudi Arabia knows what Yemenis mean, what Yemenis uh, mean when they when they say something and when they are doing something. Um, uh, so th- this is the the summary of the of the of the latest. Uh, developments uh, now, until now. Uh, okay. You can now ask if you want. Okay, great. Thank you very much for that. So, well, I guess to cut right to the chase here, uh, Nasser, you mentioned how, and this has been apparent, I think, all along, certainly for the last year, There's just it's just been already proven, I think, the Saudis can not achieve their goal of putting Hadi back on the throne in the capital city of Sana, uh, so-called President Hadi, who Hillary Clinton put in power there uh, back in 2012. So since everybody knows that that is the case, as you said, the, the war is already blowing back against Saudi Arabia. They're having missiles launched at their cities and this kind of thing. Um, so my question is, do you have any indication that Saudi goals have changed, that they are adapting what it is that they're trying to accomplish yes, to the yes. new situation? Maybe they'll just carve the second, up the South and keep the South. And This is the second, uh, this is the second point. Uh, I hope we can discuss it deeply so that your audience can understand. Very good. Uh, I think Saudi Arabia and the Emirates changed their goal now. Um, uh, although it is still, in my analysis, it is still within its goal, because uh, Saudi Arabia goal is not the declared goal. Saudi Arabia uh, is fighting in Yemen not because of Iran and not because of uh, protecting their legitimacy. I mean, it is not a, a civil war, as, as Saudi Arabia is saying, and it is not a proxy war for uh, against Iran. It is not. It is only a war against Yemen because it is Yemen. So let me now tell you, uh, answer your question, uh, how they try to change their uh, their goals or their tactic. Let me t- let me say their tactic because they feel they are under under big pressure now. Saudi Arabia is under big pressure because it's two years of billions and billions and billions of dollars spent and and hundreds of uh, thousands of people uh, killed of. Saudi soldiers killed, and uh, of course, uh, weapons and uh, advanced weapons, American advanced weapons like Bradley, Bradley and uh, um, uh, the, the tanks, uh, what we call it, the, the Abrams, the Abrams tanks, and many other advanced weapons. So, Saudi Arabia now uh, tries to change its military tactics. Uh, because of Trump, unfortunately. Because Bin Salman was with Trump last week 
in the uh, White House. And uh, he uh, Bin Salman. Promised, this is this is the defense minister, the young new defense minister of Saudi Arabia. Yes, let me tell you and your audience, this is the king. No, I can't only tell him the would-be king. This is the real king. This is the real decision maker. I think the American uh, high circle in the in the, in, uh, in Trump administration knows that he's the king. Not, not he's not the number three. He's the number one now. In fact, but I anyway, think it, it, Nasser, I think it's pretty well reported that the king is so old and has dementia, and that he can't even really. Uh, speak with callers at the court without reading his answers off his iPad and this kind of thing. And so exactly, it seems exactly. like that's pretty much the consensus, as you say. There. Exactly, exactly. His, his father is very old, and uh, um, he's now all. He, he has all the powers in his hand now. Uh, political, security, and, uh, and economy. All powers, all, without any exception. Everybody knows this. This is reported by the... U.S. media and everyone knows it. Anyway, so he came to White House and he promised to give uh, to invest uh, with twenty uh, with two hundred billion dollars in four years there in the in U.S. infrastructure and uh, and uh, rock oil and uh, and all these things. This is this money is to gain the support of of of, of Trump. And now, whether Trump would support him more than, than Obama or not, but Saudi Arabia feels this. Saudi Arabia feels that Trump would help more. So what they, are, what they want, what are they going to do? They are going to, uh, to strangle Yemenis more, to tighten the blockade. What they are going to uh, or they are planning now to uh, take the coastal city of Hudayda, the only harbor that Yemenis have now, the only uh, window between Yemen and the world, the only window, and uh, where the even, where even the human uh, the human aid come from. So now they try to help. They try to convince Trump administration that uh, if we take control over this city, over this harbor, everything will be okay. And this is not right. First, it will be even more difficult, and they tried. They tried many times. They tried for six months now. They have been trying for six months uh, with the with the help of U.S. warships and everything, and you know there were many many incidents. So there were many missiles fired to the uh, warships, and uh, and uh, a Saudi warship was uh, destroyed. And so they were trying. It is not new, but the problem is that they want to convince uh, U.S. to do an immoral thing, to do inhuman things. By, by, by starving Yemenis more, by uh, by preventing Yemenis from food uh, uh, and medicine and uh, oil and uh, fuels more as they are now. So um, this point is now uh, discussed in the White House. The, uh, the defense minister um, James Mattis, I think, to discuss this with uh, uh, with Mr. Maxter, uh, McMaster, the uh, security advisor, the national security advisor, and it is being discussed now. It is being discussed, but there are people uh, in the administration who uh, abuse, and there are people who uh, support and who uh, agree with this point. And I think uh, Saudi Arabia and the Emirates uh, would do another uh, adventure here in Yemen by doing this uh, humanitarian problem, by uh, blockading uh, or by stopping the only place that uh, Yemenis uh, receive their food, 
because Yemeni is to uh, re- remind you, the Yemenis export 90% of food from outside. Now it's only it's only about 20. What we receive is about 20, about 20 percent. They want to make it zero now. They want to make it zero after they prevented, after they prevented people from their salaries in the in front of the people, in front of the world. They uh, uh, kidnapped the the the, the salaries. Uh, uh, while in their way from Russia to, to Yemen. And this is a fact that is known by everyone. And they they told the UN envoy to tell UN security that people are receiving their salaries. Uh, two months, uh, about two months ago, the UN uh, envoy, Ismail uh, Wild Sheikh, told the UN Security Council in a brief that Yemenis are getting their salaries. It is not right. And I think UN now knows that it was not right. And it is not right. Nobody received their salaries until now because they, Saudi Arabia did not agree to give people their salaries. So they are um, fighting in Yemen by the economy now after they failed by military and security Security, they didn't, they finished their uh, suicide bombers. And the military, they didn't achieve anything for two years now at all. Right. Well, again, no, so if they're going to close the port, they're going to finish, or I don't know, finish, but worsen the the uh, war against the civilian population by closing down what's left to international trade. But still, why? What do you think that they want now? They're going to break off the south and, and have a north and south Yemen again like it was before? Yes, this is. This is a good point. This is a good point. Um, in, um, uh, what is declared? What is declared is that uh, Saudis keep lying that Iran is in Yemen. Very strong. That's right. Yeah, and, and believe uh, me, the you know, or well, as far as I can tell, and I'm I'm really looking closely at this. It, it really looks like the Secretary of Defense Mattis that you mentioned there. He really believes this crap about Iran being behind everything, everywhere. So bad news for you, dude. Yes, many people, many people, unfortunately, many people try to. There is also another one who was in the in the in the, in the U.S. Congress yesterday. One who I know personally. That is Gerald Feierstein, the ambassador that he was he, he was here for three years in Yemen. I know him personally. I met him hundreds of times. I know why he kept telling uh, Congress that Iran is there. I know uh, very well, but unfortunately, they they just lie to make uh, U.S. administration now make a, a stronger decision with Saudis and those who want to uh, to, um, to to say this, they are they have many interests from from the Saudis, unfortunately. So they say that Iran is in Yemen, and we want to cut uh, the road uh, for, uh, uh, to stop Iran from 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 uh, having more and more influence. In this other words, you're you're saying that you don't think that they've really changed their goals. They've just uh, up to the propaganda about yeah. Iran because they want America yeah. to intervene to double our intervention so that they can in fact take back the capital city. Exactly, it is not a change. It is the same thing as I told you from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. But uh, what changed now is a new administration, and they want to to uh, to secure its uh, support, and they want uh, they want to make um, um, uh, Trump. Uh, uh, enthusiastic with them and to help them more. And I think um, uh, uh, Trump would, uh, if he if he if he agrees, uh, he he would be more blind than than even uh, than even Obama if he if he helps them in, in any way, mm-hmm. because it's only even if. Let me say, for the sake of argument, let me say that. Let me. Uh, suppose that Iran is in Yemen and they want to defeat Iran in Yemen. Although this is not right, but if Iran is this and you defeat Iran in Yemen, uh, if you defeat Iran in Yemen, what is the alternative? What is the 
what will replace them? What will replace Iran? The, 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 what will replace Iran? What is the, the, uh, the, 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 the alternative? Qaeda and ISIS is, is, is the thing that will, that will come and rule in Yemen. It is the more Saudi Arabia is getting in Yemen, the more Qaeda ISIS. It's only Qaeda ISIS. Everyone uh, who is fighting with Saudi Arabia now is Qaeda ISIS. Everyone, I'm saying. I'm responsible for what I'm saying. No army, no tribesmen. Just Qaeda ISIS. Just from the Brotherhood, from the military wing of Brotherhood. And the people, missionaries from everywhere, yes. But Qaeda ISIS is, 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 is ruling every, everywhere uh, uh, Saudi, Saudi comes uh, or Saudi uh, gets. If Saudi gets a city or a place or area, then Qaeda is there. Qaeda, the upper hand is for Al Qaeda everywhere. In Aden, for example, in the in the in the eastern provinces of Hadramaut, uh, these are Qaeda ISIS. Unfortunately, the upper hand is for Qaeda ISIS, and it is even more dangerous to the interest of uh, of, uh, of, of, of of Trump and the Americans. And if uh, if they, for example, if they t- take now, if they take uh, Hudaydah, the coastal province uh, of Hudaydah, uh, the western coast, there will be uh, Qaeda ISIS for sure, because we know now there are many, many security operations there. Uh, uh, many people arrested as Qaeda working with them. If they are there, if Saudi Saudi takes Saudi, uh, Hudaydah, then the international navigation will be under threat, even more, more, much more than, than Iran, as they say. Mm-hmm. Much, much more. And by so the way, I, it is, it, uh, let, me, let me say here for the audience, for people who aren't familiar, um, you know, it's clearly the case that the Islamic State split off from Al Qaeda in Syria back in 2013, and they've killed each other a lot and have a pretty big split. But Nasser has explained on the show before Um, about how in Yemen the split between al-Qaeda and ISIS is not so great and that really it's more or less one and the same group. And that's why he uses the phrase al-Qaeda-ISIS in a way where you don't usually hear that in any other context. Um, But it's pretty well established, I think, uh, as far as what's going on in Yemen. And you can address that more if you want. Yes, I don't differentiate at all between Qaeda and ISIS, at least in Yemen, of course. I'm talking about Yemen. Qaeda is ISIS and ISIS is Qaeda now. There is some some small differences. Uh, I told you uh, many times about uh, people now are going more to ISIS as a new thing, as a new fashion. Yes, but it's still the same thing, the same view, the same ideology, the same tactics and uh, everything. Even the same persons. We know them. We know some of them. We know we know the, uh, some of the young people and uh, some of the middle. Uh, middle class uh, people and uh, we know them uh, we know how they deal and what they say about Qaeda and ISIS Qaeda, uh, it's a terrorism it's a uh, caliphate it's uh, all these things um, the same thing uh, so let me now finish with you about the Hudayda, if they take sure. Hudayda Qaeda ISIS would uh, be uh, would be dominating there like Aden now. If people want any evidence, uh, if, any, if any Americans or any Western observer or any one of those who are interested in Yemen and in Qaeda, uh, in South now, Saudi, for, Saudi-backed forces uh, and Emirates have been for one and uh, uh, many months, for one year and many months in the South, and uh, unfortunately, they did not do anything. The people, the local people are complaining, and uh, the security is zero, and Qaeda ISIS is doing their job much better than any other place. Doing their job and uh, 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 recruiting, expanding, and uh, uh, arming themselves from the most advanced weapons, and uh, many of the American advanced uh, uh, weapons uh, uh, fell in the hand of Al Qaeda and ISIS in the south and uh, in, in in other places where where Saudi Arabia tried to to um, to find some people to uh, to fight with them. So it's uh, even dangerous, even if even if 
if they say Iran is in Yemen and they defeat Iran. It is very uh, dangerous, dangerous to think or to, uh, to, 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 to do things blindly like uh, Saudi Arabia uh, is doing now in Yemen. Hmm. All right. Now, the, the Washington Post article that I think you're referring to here is Trump administration weighs deeper involvement in Yemen war. It's from the 26th. And it's about how Mattis wants to uh, wants uh, President Trump to allow him to lift all restrictions on aid to our Gulf state partners in this war, uh, the UAE and the Saudis, of course, above all, and wants to use special operations f- uh, forces to take this port, as you're saying, that will, you know, you're predicting anyway, obviously, it seems pretty clear, uh, is going to end up leading to them turning the port over to ISIS and the Islamic State by the time they're done there, because there's really no other force uh, in the South to take it. Um, and, you know, as I'm I, I read this, but I'm I'm looking back through it now. And they do mention Al Qaeda down at the bottom as kind of an afterthought, uh, which is about how this war has been. You know, they fought this drone war for 2009 through 15 Obama did this drone war, and I know you covered it for the New York Times for years there, but now for the last two years, we've been fighting for them. Um, And now, you know, with this raid, they did the big raid, that seems to indicate that they want to clamp down against Al-Qaeda too, Uh, but it it certainly seems from the the, the read in the Washington Post here that the emphasis is on the Houthis and Iranian power in Yemen. We've got, above all, we've got to get the Houthis out of Yemen. And yet, but that means Saleh's forces too. And and what percent of the army is actually still loyal to Saleh and now is in alliance with the Houthis? And what level, I mean, it seems like if starvation isn't working, it's going to take an American invasion of sending in the Marines to get the Houthis and Saleh and his men out of Sana. Am I wrong about that? You see, this this Washington Post uh, article is based on three things. A big lie, a Saudi big lie, that is Iran always. Mm-hmm. And the, 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 the second thing is the, the Mattis, General uh, Mattis, James Mattis is very extremist. Uh, against uh, Iran, and he has very extremist views on Iran, and this is up to him. Uh, uh, but uh, he he tries to convince uh, the administration about uh, the dangers of Iran and this and this and this. The other, the, the third point is the, the ambassador I told you, the, the ambassador in Yemen, who was here, and he was under the influence of the Brotherhood, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. In a way or, or, or another, he took only the view of those people, and from that time, he keeps only talking about Iran, as as if he were only uh, one of them. So he's just defending the Brotherhood, which means to me, uh, I, I argued with him many times uh, in face to face, which means uh, Qaeda ISIS. Uh, so uh, the, the, these um, uh, the, 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 the article. You know, not only the army and the millions of people who talk to the streets yesterday and uh, uh, who everybody knows, but they, 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 they ignored the threat that the United States is concerned about. The big threat, the real threat, the real threat now uh, is the tight ISIS. And the, the, the biggest threat and the biggest uh, concern for, for Trump now as he keeps saying is the Qaeda ISIS. But, uh, unfortunately, now that they try, the people who want to, uh, who want other things, they talk about, about, about another uh, danger, about another threat, um, which is Iran. Uh, but if they say Iran, Iran, if they keep saying, saying Iran, 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 um, but uh, why they are killing Yemen is this way. Why they are killing Yemenis? I mean, Yemen now is paying very, very, very high price for nothing. Yeah. Well, and and the whole thing about Iran, uh, as you're saying, even assuming that it was true, the policy is still horrible. But it's just not true, too. And I interviewed, uh, I think, a Dutch or a Belgian 
expert on this named Joost Hilterman, who wrote a thing for foreign policy called The Houthis Are Not Hezbollah, where he explained, I interviewed him on the show, and he said, you know, and we already know Gareth Porter has debunked the accusations that Iran was shipping weapons, um, you know, on a case-by-case basis, where either the ship wasn't really going to Yemen, it was going to Somalia, or it wasn't even an Iranian ship, or whatever it was, um, uh, or or it wasn't an Iranian ship, but it didn't have any weapons on it, I guess was the other one. But anyway, yeah. uh, Hilterman was saying, even if Gareth Porter hadn't debunked these specific accusations about arms transfers, even if you just accepted the premise that, okay, Iran has shipped a few ships full of light arms to the Houthis, well, still, so what? I mean, that hardly amounts to anything in this massive war, and when, as we've talked about, uh, much of the army, I don't know what proportion again, but much of the army has joined forces with the Houthis. So all those guns are the ones that Obama gave them from 2009 through 2015 or 14 or well, I don't know, 13. So anyway, um, so all this in what Hilterman was saying was basically just that this whole thing about Iran being behind this, even if you accepted the premises behind the accusation he said the accusation still basically amounts to nothing it, the accusation basically amounts to the iranians are rooting for the houthis and in fact if anything all this pink all this finger pointing at iran and blaming iran is actually giving them a win with them not even having to do anything as they get to look like they're frustrating the saudis to such a great degree and they get to stay home this is this is their problem the problem is that there are some American diplomats and uh, uh, officials, senior officials, like uh, like uh, James Mattis, um, who uh, want to uh, portray uh, Iran as a big uh, as a big uh, danger and a threat, as uh, the biggest one. And uh, at the same time, ignoring uh, Saudi Arabia, ignoring, let me say, Qaeda ISIS. Uh, this is this is, I think, the, the the most dangerous thing that we 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 we, we, we observe now, because uh, it's not. Um, uh, I mean, uh, United States has all the right to uh, protect their. Their uh, their interest in the way in the in, in, in the way they they like in the way they see right. Everybody agrees on this, but now um, it's just lying. They lie, and this is very dangerous to them. They lie that they lie about they lie about missiles now, the ballistic missiles. They say the ballistic missiles. I told you the locally modified ballistic missiles we have now, the Yemeni army has now, they say that it's, uh, they were brought from Iran. Now, this is impossible. Impossible. And, and they keep, they push this way. They push this way in a way to, uh, to, to, um, to persuade Trump to do something uh, which will be much, much, much dangerous than any other thing. If they, uh, I mean, uh, U.S., is involved already involved in the in the U.S. Uh, in the Saudi aggression in Yemen. Everybody knows, but they want it to be even uh, more and more deeper and deeper. And this is very dangerous too. If it uh, for for Yemenis, they, they don't care at all. I mean, they they um, they are fighting and they will keep fighting and they will not uh, surrender at all because uh, they lost everything and they have nothing more to to lose now. But uh, would Trump do uh, such uh, uh, pointless uh, things or uh, dangerous things? This is uh, the question. All right. So listen, I'm sorry I've kept you on so long, but let's uh, wrap up uh, sort of where we started here with the humanitarian situation, because uh, as I know that you're painfully aware of the media, the virtual media blackout on this issue in uh, America, if if we hear anything about the war, it's just about the mean old Iranians or whatever kind of excuses for American policy. We never get to really hear, hey, guess what Oxfam says about what we're doing to these people. So um, back to the original point, as you said at the beginning, 
this is a country um, because of really uh, IMF intervention and so forth in the first place. Uh, they said, hey, Yemen, instead of growing food you can eat, you should grow food that you can sell on the global market and then buy and import your food, which is great, right, for the division of labor and and global freedom and lower prices for all consumers everywhere. And yet it means that if we go to war against you, we can strangle you now and you'll be helpless before us. So here's this poorest country in the entire Arab world. Um, I guess it's tied for poverty with Somalia across the strait there. Um, and they import 90% of their food, and then America, the global superpower, and their Saudi sidekicks put them under a blockade. And as you're saying, as, as the UN is saying, as the, every NGO is saying, there are men, women, and children, grandparents, and babies who are starving to death in this war. So please tell the Americans whatever you think they need to know about what's really going on, what it's really like to be living under this American policy now. Well, let me let me tell you that uh, Saudi Arabia wants to draw uh, the American new administration to uh, uh, the Quagmire it is in now. Um, because it's uh, uh, Saudi Arabia doesn't know what to do because uh, the uh, the longer the war, uh, the more frustrated uh, and the more failed it feels. Uh, Saudi Arabia feels, uh, and uh, they try to uh, they try to 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 uh, to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, enlist the help the American help to be there because they want. Uh, to tell um, uh, themselves and the people that they are uh, in the right uh, direction. Let me tell you one point: why they are focusing on the on the on, on the starving people. They are focusing on the starving people because also uh, uh, they miscalculate. They miscalculate uh, the the people, the people who are now with the army and the fight, Yemeni fighters. They say only they lie that they occupy 75%. This is what they say in Saudi media and everywhere. Because they have, a, they have the so-called legitimate president and so-called legitimate uh, uh, government, and they say they are controlling, or uh, nine, uh, 75% is under their control. And the people, uh, is, uh, the, the population or the popularity they have is 90%. This is not right. Uh, the people who saw the, the rally of yesterday uh, would say no. Their, their, their popularity is zero, and uh, they, they, don't, if they, uh, they don't occupy the 75% of, of, Yemen, of Yemeni land at all. Uh, because if they have all these things, they would do something. They would do a, a good example, but they don't do a good example. So they... So they just want to to uh, strangle the people by the by their food, by uh, the, the, their basic life needs and supply, uh, in order to have people easily, in order to have people surrendered. And this is uh, the impossible, because uh, Yemeni people, Yemeni people yesterday were uh, carrying. Access, big access, to say we are going to grow wheat and to make our own food. You are not going to kneel us down. You are not going to, to make us surrender. You are not going to, 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 uh, to take our country by, by, by force. So uh, this is how they stupidly deal with Yemen. Whether so you're saying Saudis you're saying Nasser, you're saying that the the famine isn't that bad as as much as they're saying in that it's they're basically even though they're causing it they're using it really just as war propaganda so that they can escalate using it as an excuse for further intervention. But you're saying that the Yemeni people are adapting to the blockade basically and they're feeding each other one way or another uh, rather than starving to death. Is that right? See, 
one of their senior officials said and keep saying, Saudi officials keep saying that uh, dismantling dismantling the central bank is more important than the UN resolution 2216, which means that it is okay. We discovered good thing. We take their salaries, we take their food, we take their water, we take everything, and then we we win. This is how they think, and this is a big immoral problem to the world. It is a big shame, big dis disgrace to let e let them even talk about these things. Because But you're saying no like this. you're you're not you're not saying that there's not a problem. You're just saying that it's not going to ultimately work in terms of forcing the uh, Salah Houthi coalition to surrender to them because they can yes. adapt to some degree. There is a humanitarian problem. They are making it from the very beginning for two years now. But at the same time, it they will never ever win by this way. And the reality is. The reality is now is our evidence now. Six months without salaries, and uh, uh, people are still living, and they, they they are ready to die because what they can what they can do, well, what they can do. But now, as I told you yesterday, they talk to the streets, millions, in that big rally, in that historic rally of yesterday, mm -hmm. with their big axes, with their big axes, which means which uh, symbolically means that they would uh, cultivate the land. They would go to the land and they would uh, plow and they will uh, uh, grow wheat and uh, barley and uh, sorghum and everything and to depend on themselves. Uh, but they would not give in. They would not surrender. This is, I mean, there is a big uh, resilience. Hey, uh, let me ask one last thing. When was the last time the New York Times invited you to write for them? Not only two years, as you said. Is I've been writing for uh, New York Times for five years, and uh, for media, for media in general, for me, uh, Western media for 20 years, for about 20 years, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, 1990, uh, from from 2000, let me say, 17 years, Western. So uh, I've been writing for New York Times and others. Yeah, I mean, uh, I found but, you through uh, but now uh, for New York the Times, Carnegie Endowment. Now I choose not to write for them because of, the, of my. Of my opinion now, only. That's it. I, it's still open for me if I want to write, but uh, I can't now because of my opinion. That's it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I wonder, I'd be interested to hear what would happen if you wrote a hard news piece about, or a news analysis piece about the position of the Yemeni people right now, and the position they're in and what they're doing about it, and, and what the long-term outlook is and that kind of thing, and, and see what they say. I guess they probably wouldn't run it. There are a lot of people who are now writing good writings, And we have a lot of things to, uh, a lot of outlets to write. Uh, so there is no need to just to to pretend that I am moderate or at, uh, as, they, as they call it or something like this. Or, but uh, now there are many outlets to for me to express my my clear view uh, without any uh, sugar coating because I don't like sugar coating in such a, a big uh, dangerous thing. Yeah, well, I'm with you there. And you certainly don't sugarcoat it. All right, so thank you again, Nasser. I'm I really sorry you, about I, what's I, happening I, here. As you can tell, and I lost, I lost a lot of, 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 of interest because of my, of my outspeaking. But I don't care at all, at all. No, I understand. And you shouldn't and Although, no, you although should. I know how to, to be euphemist, I know how to be, how uh, sugarcoat, and uh, because they... I know what they want, uh, what they want me to do and to say, but I can't at all. And I told everybody that I can't. Yeah. Well, I mean, you. there may be a way to write just hard news with no opinion in it, but without sugarcoating it necessarily. But not that I not that I think that you would get the real truth by the New York Times editors anyway. But I just, I just yes, it's yes. An interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's an it's interesting it's, thought it's a long experiment. Story, yeah. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very and, uh, much, Nasser. I really appreciate it. And again, I'm really sorry and, uh, about what my country's doing to yours, as always. Thank you very much. And I always feel that we, we find a lot of free people everywhere. And we know that it's, uh, uh, the, 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 the crimes are crimes against everyone. Terror is terror, everyone. Terror is terror. What happened in London last week and everywhere is terror. But 
sometimes we 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 are different in uh, in explanation and unfortunately yeah all right well thank you again nasser i really appreciate it thank you very much okay bye all right so that is nasser arabi you can find him at yemen hyphen now.com yemen dash now.com um and well just put in his name into your uh, search machine and you'll find all kinds of articles going back years and years explaining what's up there that's scott horton show thanks very much you guys find uh, all my stuff at scotthorton.org uh 4000 interviews going back to 2003 there um i'm doing questions and answers now on the old whole show feed cuz i don't have a live show anymore so on the old whole show feed i'm doing questions and answers for you you can uh tweet me or email me there uh, Scott at scotthorton.org or at Scott Horton Show, and I'll do your uh, questions and answers for you. And then, uh, yeah, so like I just said, follow me on Twitter at Scott Horton Show. Hey, all Scott Horton here. It's always safe to say that one should keep at least some of your savings in precious metals as a hedge against inflation. And if this economy ever does heat back up and the banks start expanding credit, rising prices could make metals a very profitable bet. Since 1977, Robertson Roberts Brokerage Inc. has been helping people buy and sell gold, silver, platinum, and palladium, and they do it well. They're fast, reliable, and trusted for more than 35 years. And they take Bitcoin. Call Robertson Roberts at 1-800-874-9760 or stop by rrbi.co. You drink coffee. I drink coffee. Just about everyone drinks coffee. So why bother with anything but the best? Darren's Coffee is roasted at his new shop in Claremont, Indiana. And coming soon, you can order on Amazon and support the show by using Scott Horton's affiliate link. Darrenscoffee.com. Because everyone deserves to drink great coffee.